The Persian version, a story about an immigrant Iranian family through the generations who don't just want to have fun. New York-based Iranian-American director Maryam Keshavarz brings us a story of relationship issues and identity issues in many forms. What was my take on the Persian version? Feel free to like and subscribe and let's find out. In terms of the whole feel and tempo of the movie, I just liked it. I liked the way the movie started off. I liked some of the montages in the earlier scenes. To me, that just demonstrated the director Kesha Vaz is an artist, despite the fact she's had infrequent film productions. <laughs> The other thing I liked, despite the flaws in it, was the movie's sense of time, specifically in terms of the late 2000s sort of being now. Very much a 2007, 8, 9 feel, making the timeline ambiguous, probably because of Kesha Vaz's generation. She's kind of Gen X. That's the Persian Mafia. You can't hang with them unless you own a BMW. Just before Millennials and Zoomers. <laughs> Anyway, I really like the sense of time. Again, to the fact Kesha Vaz is a female director, as the movie starts off, I like in the party, we have nods to the movie Point Break. Directed by female director, Catherine Bigelow. There were just establishing components within this movie where I'm like, I'd seen her previous movie circumstance. I'll get to that in a second. But when I saw the trailer, I knew this was gonna be a proper movie. As I'm sitting in the cinema and this movie's starting, I'm like, okay, you've got me. Kesha Vaz trying to just about be young enough to kind of relate to the millennial dating experience. Again, it works, but it has flaws. The generational story, as in mother versus daughter, despite the back and forth timeline having some issues, was very much real to the Persian diasporic experience. You were always like this. I really appreciated the actress who played the mum. She's holding different behavior in different time periods and she's carrying that kind of trauma from her youth alongside of course the main character Layla based on the director right not quite as good as the actress who played the mum but still good someone who's an actress first and Iranian second hello we're Persian this movie certainly a post Shahs of Sunset movie I'm a Persian pop priestess that's my job what the hell is that it's a movie about Iranians but focusing on second generation Iranians that have grown up in the States as opposed to second generation Americans who've grown up in the States trying to tell us what it's like back in Iran vis-a-vis -vis circumstance. Here's my thing with circumstance, right? Kisha Vaz's last film that I remember at least. I don't want to focus on it too much. I just want to say... You can probably guess I didn't like circumstance very much. At least I respect her, her efforts to make a film about Iran, even though I thought it was a big kind of snore fest and cringe fest, right? At least from a male point of view. Circumstance in relation to this movie, the Persian version, it very much feels like Maryam Kejavaz has found her lane. And I don't mean that in a derogatory sense of stick to your lane, I just mean this is way more closer to her story based on her own life background. Whereas with Circumstance, again, it's the freaking second generation Iranian diaspora trying to preach to the world about look how bad the political situation in Iran is. And it's like, yeah, but you fucking live in the UK or America or Canada, like. The Islamic Republic of Iran is so corrupt that you don't even want to get into it, so yeah. You're just using the situation in Iran that isn't your experience, even if you went there on holidays, to garner attention. 14,000 people are about to die for protesting, did you hear? I post my nudes on the internet for money. I'll summarize it like this. When I saw Circumstance, I had a sense of the whole movie is going to be chicks are becoming LGBTQ because the men are such greaseballs. <laughs> You watch the film and you're like, chicks are becoming LGBTQ because the men are such greaseballs. That's what I took away from it. That's what you thought it would be. That's what it was. Ah! With Persian version, I saw the trailer. This looks like it's going to be good. It was good. I'm still gay. I just happened to get pregnant. You weren't gay on Halloween. The chick's LGBTQ because she's LGBTQ. And how is she relating that to the whole timeline ambiguous New York 2014 messed up dating scene? In terms of the main character, Layla, let's, let's say it like this. To Iranian in America, to American in Iran. Her generation is just as kind of ambiguous. Gen X or is she millennial? Is this really what was going on in the late 90s, early 2000s? Or is this what was going on in the late 2000s, 2010s? Her generation is as 
confusing as her sexual orientation is as confusing and layered as her cultural background, right? To Iranian in America, to American in Iran. It is what it is. I'm not going to hate at all, right? I'll just say, in the movie, the insinuation is she's the L in LGBTQ, lesbian, not the B, bisexual, right? But the majority of the movie is about a straight relationship of sorts. He's not gay, he's European. But, uh, only on special occasions. Essentially, it's a movie about a Persian chick and an English man, but it's still, oh, it's LGBTQ. Then it's like, well, no, it's just LGBTQ adjacent. Let me say it properly. Let, let's get it. They've changed it now. LGBTQIA+. Say that again. LGBTQIA+. I get it. It's about someone who's confused about their sexual orientation but their confusion made me as a viewer confused not to the point I didn't like the movie but to the point where I was just confused about the orientation of it all I don't know is it a movie about a Gen X lesbian chick is it a movie about a millennial Persian heterosexual serial monogamist I'm not sure but guess what it kind of worked in the context of depicting this kind of messed up New York 2014-esque dating world there's the quick hookups at the party quick one night stand slash afterwards acting distant and detached and not answering calls and pretending to not be interested to look more attractive and I don't want to be a pick me girl the other side is again as a Persian chick the way she's acting not answering the phone calls and stuff let me just say it to you like this in the 2000s it felt like Persian chicks would play more games say than girls from other backgrounds whereas in the 2010s to an extent it felt like every girl was playing these games doing tactical dating so there's certain layers in this film that are a bit confusing but at the same time authentic and genuine that, that's the only way i can make sense of it the thing that makes it work in the end is the fact she has an arc that mirrors her mother's arc how they executed that was a bit off but the core of it makes sense in terms of the caliber of dude she gets an english where's wally kind of fake hugh grant dude so essentially she can boss around the English man in New York. English man in New York. I said it in the short, I'll, I'll reiterate it now. The Layla character could have been a little bit nicer. You could be a little nicer. You could cut down on the sassiness a little bit, babe. It's like that shit got played out in the 90s. Like that's some Sharon Stone shit. Stop trying to be the Persian Sharon Stone. I don't know, Shohre Eston. <laughs> There were things from a half Persian perspective where it's very relatable, um, it's personal, it is personal. I was invested in this movie very early on when I see the Layla character when she's young, going to Iran in the 80s, smuggling Michael Jackson videos into Iran. I'm like, yo, I can relate to this on numerous levels. First of all, I'd smuggled an NBA All-Star Game video in 95 in my suitcase, not to smuggle Western media, just I hadn't got around to watching it. But I remember when I got to the airport, I'm like, oh fuck. I'm not going to some European country, I'm going to Iran. I shouldn't have brought this video. Downtown, short camp. When it said Michael Jackson, it had a smooth criminal graphic. I'm like, oh my God, I lived in Tehran in 1990. That video of Moonwalker was in circulation. I used to go to my great, my gra my great auntie, my grandmother's younger sister's house. I used to go to her house, put on Moonwalker, but always fast forward it to the bit where it's smooth criminal. <laughs> I'm not gonna get emotional, but fucking hell, like. This movie had stuff that I could relate to on a very, very personal level. When I lived in Tehran, watching Top of the Pops videos from 86, MTV videos from 86, 87. Before the internet and satellite TV, Iran was stuck in the mid 80s, in the early 90s. I saw some kind of wonderful for the first time in Tehran in 1990. I'm sorry, my hand slipped though. Having her as a young character wearing the kind of thriller Billie Jean jacket, I'm like, Jesus Christ, like, I grew up with that generation of Iranians. Old school Persian song. You always got that fruity Persian guy who thought he was Michael Jackson. <laughs> the other thing is the school scene where it's like she's too Iranian in an American school, too American in a Persian school. Just before we moved back to the UK, my mum was going to enroll me in an Iranian school. And I remember looking at her like, Mum, enough's enough now. It's time to go back. From a relatability perspective, I'm thankful it came out in the cinema. There are flaws with it, what I'm going to get to, but certain things that are in it are very touching to certain people out there. 
she had a very clear and determined vision. It was just the execution was a bit off. Starts off in New York, different timelines. Then the bit in the middle where it goes back to Iran in the 60s, it felt too much like a different movie. It was like 26 minutes, but it felt like 36 minutes and it distracted too much. Then when it came back to the main plot line, which is the daughter's narrative arc, it hadn't developed the English boyfriend or the, the English donor baby daddy character enough. Um, the brothers who I thought I was going to dislike, I actually liked, didn't develop their sibling dynamic enough. She wanted to do a parallel story. She wanted to do her Godfather 2 type of film, but it was like two different movies forced into one that felt like they were stepping on each other's toes. I just think Mariam Keshavaz got into the game a little bit late and I'm not blaming her. I guess she tried to be a movie maker when she was in her 30s, then she probably had kids, so it got put on the shelf. That's totally fine. She's got music from 2019 that's supposedly representing the 2000s. And it still kind of works because it's kind of ambiguous timeline, it's fine. It's cool, it's just, again, I, I feel like this is a movie she wanted to make 10, 15 years ago. She's only getting to make it now. So in terms of the thing with her mum, it's maybe two movies, but she wants it to be this one movie. But in her defense, in Kishavaz's defense, as much as I might have laughed at the film's circumstance, I know she had a vision even from that film. I just thought it was goofy. I thought it was a bit ridiculous, but she does have a vision and she is an artist. That's the main thing. She's definitely an artist, 100% she's an artist. And I am very appreciative that she did make this film. So in conclusion, yes, there were parts of this movie that felt like they were stepping on each other's toes. It took away from developing some of the characters, you know, like I said, the brothers and the Englishmen. Fine. But overall, I must say, this is the best film I've ever seen from a generational Persian immigrant perspective. This is certainly a heartfelt project. You can just see it. The rough reviews seem to be about six out of 10. I'd give it a seven out of 10. It could have been an eight out of 10 if they had have put it together a little bit more. It's post not without my daughter, post Shards of Sunset. What the hell is that? <laughs> post House of Sand and Fog, post everything. They will shoot my children. We've got this story where it's like, let's not just have sensational stuff. I know the LGBTQ dynamic is sensational, but it was still, all of that was secondary to the fact that, look, these are people that have had their own plight and come to the States. Like I always say, if you've made it to the end, thank you very much. Feel free to like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.